All right. Um, I, there, there's a really cool thing happening. I didn't expect to come to the room meetup tonight and be speaking with a current coworker and a past coworker. So Jason, Dustin, you're really cool people, and this is awesome. And like, I also work with Lauren. Uh, but yeah, I, I work here at New Relic, too. Uh, I do all the work. <laughs> it's a great segue. Uh, and um, my team is hiring. We are looking for someone to, to fill a role uh, on our team. We're, we're losing our senior engineer. She's going to go be a manager. So we're sad, and we feel betrayed. But that's OK, because we get to hire somebody else. And that's also really cool. Um, and we do really cool work. We do really. Uh, pretty distinct like variety of work. Uh, we also have a really particular way of working, so I wanted to cover both of those with you. Um, and I'll, I also just threw these slides together, so. <laughs> Woo, here we go. Uh, we work in a legacy Ruby application. Jason was talking about it earlier. There's some really, really fun things to discover in there, and we're about to do a pretty deep dive into um, some really particularly interesting stuff that is really important to the business. So we have like really prioritized work, which is awesome. Uh, my team also owns a couple Java services. We spent the last two months working in React. Uh, we have a couple Ruby services as well. So we have a, a really uh, excellent breadth of work. Um, we solve lots of problems, and it is never a dull day. Uh, but as far as the way that we work, we work in a mob. And you may be thinking, what on earth are you talking about? I haven't heard of this. Uh, this is what it looks like. Um, this is from this past summer. So it's my team uh, sitting at a mediascape. We have a, a big screen so that we can work collaboratively on a single task. We project one person's computer up onto the screen. They are the driver. So they are the one at the keys making decisions about what code to write. And they have a navigator who's helping them out. Um, our, our mob has evolved a lot, though. And so we've kind of learned some pretty like distinct rules recently that help us out. Uh, one thing we've always known is that it's really good to move that driver role. You want everyone to get hands on the keyboard, because if you don't, you just have this feeling of, I did nothing today. <laughs> like I want to do something. I want to write some code. I want to have that big win. Um, so we, we found that it's super, super important in this, as the driver switches roles, that you're working off a shared branch. That lets you work on your own machine, which is awesome, especially if maybe someone on our team has a Dvorak keyboard and they prefer to use that. Yeah. Or someone likes Vim and someone likes Atom or someone maybe is working in RubyMine. Uh, you, you're allowed to like, let your personal preferences come through if you, if you work in this particular way. And um, basically what we do is we check in whatever work we have in progress. If the code's all broken, then it's a work in progress commit. And you get to help the next person solve it. Uh, As so you break it, like you help you help a person on your team um, work through that, that change. Uh, once we started realizing that, that that shared upstream branch that everyone can push to, that, that makes sense. Is everybody a good description? Okay. Uh, once we figured that out, too, we, we started to realize that we actually had more roles in our mob than we were, were aware of. We kind of like added some really baseball-specific terms because it just fit. We haven't found better ones yet. Um, so we have the driver. That's the person at the keyboard making the decisions, doing the coding. We have the navigator who is helping them along the way and helping maybe foresee any bumps in the road. Then we have the person on deck. The person on deck was a role we really needed. That person has a timer. It's about 15 minutes, but you can experiment with the time that works for you. Uh, and the 15 minute timer is so that they, one, are ready to be the driver next. Uh, and two, they, they keep the current driver and navigator honest. You only have so much time to work because someone else also wants a turn. <laughs> and so the on the deck person was a really good person to have that timer in hand so that they're ready to go and we keep things moving in the mob. And then with on deck, we had to have in the hole. <laughs> if you're in the hole, you kind of have a break. You can go take, you know, walk around, get a snack, get some coffee. You got about 15 minutes where no one's looking for you, no one needs you. So you get a natural break in an hour long rotation if you have four people. Uh, yeah, that, that's a brief view of the mob. 
You may have way more questions than that, but this is a small talk. So if you have questions now, um, ask, ask now. What? Do you want to know more about mobbing? Yes, we have hints. <laughs> I'm going to leave these up. Excellent. Uh, so we have been spending basically every workday 10 to 12 in the morning and 1.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon. We have been a very mob heavy team and that has definitely suited the work that we've been doing. You kind of get time to, to work independently in there as well. And we also have adapted to kind of have people branching off and doing some solo work when appropriate. Um, it doesn't always work out when we're doing a lot of research. So when we're doing a lot of research, we tend to split um, and allow someone to have that singular focus. So in S, the basically paired computing, but on C. Yeah, it's, um, it, so mobbing is part of like agile, like it's in some agile workflows and some like of the most extreme programming has, you know, they've adapted pairing and they've also adapted mobbing. It does have a kind of extreme effect of we really want to be productive. If there's four of us at a mediascape together, we really want to get something done. So our motivation is really high to prioritize well and make sure that we're working on the right thing. And that can make it feel like extreme at times. We take long breaks because we just, we just need it. <laughs> uh, I'm curious how quickly you guys survive uh, with the navigator role for mostly else. Can anybody contribute, or is it like if you're not the navigator, you should probably be the, a little bit just the deferential, I guess? Yeah, that's something that I think we're always working on. Um, there's definitely a tendency, if you're not the navigator, there's a tendency to really want to help. And there's a tendency to want to speak up, and it may not always be helpful, and you may not be helping. You may be hurting the current navigator more than, more than you realize. So there, there's some, you have to be careful about it. Um, and it's also helpful to the navigator to not be getting conflicting messages uh, from, sorry, to the driver, to not be getting like two people telling him which way to turn. Uh, so you want to help them have a singular focus. Uh, so we've kind of had the suggestion that the navigator should ask for help. And that can kind of control the flow of having a pull instead of a push of more suggestions. Yeah. Uh, if, you, uh, if you have a lot of like, progress uh, to make, uh, do you think that um, uh, it's so as to trip uh, issues and other things? Yeah. The nice thing is if we don't squash our commits, it's pretty clear, you know, uh, that everyone was contributing. Like that's that's definitely a really strong aspect that comes out. Um, we have been working mostly in greenfield applications and like kind of the earlier stages of things, and it's worked for us to not squash those commits to kind of have a record of what we were trying to do. We haven't yet kind of taken this model into the larger code bases. Uh, and I think that we'll have some tweaking to do there, and we may not have as many work in progress. We may be squashing more. I saw a ton. It's more hands. I love it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Mix, mixing metaphors. <laughs> Uh, we, we've been keeping a single keyboard, you know, a single machine, so one person, and we haven't, like, we haven't yet run into a scenario where we would want to pass the keyboard while someone's typing. We kind of say, if, if, you know, it's okay for me as a driver to ask for, can you tell me exactly what you want me to write here if I'm, if I'm not sure what a navigator is looking for. The, 
Really, I think what has been remarkable to us is uh, the forced productivity. Um, you know, we, we do a daily stand-up, but uh, I kind of mentioned earlier that this mob must be effective. You must be doing the highest priority work to justify four people being at the same computer, doing the same task together. And I think that that's really kind of been the big win for us. It's always clear what I, our priority is, and we know that we're always doing the most important work. And if we're not, we pivot really quickly. <laughs> Uh, so we, we don't have as many moments where we're kind of split and not sure what to do. We always can kind of get to that most critical work fastest. So, yeah. I'm trying to think. I think like it, it has slowed us, slowed us down in research phases. It just doesn't, there's times when you, you as an individual can get pretty, pretty deep in and it can be hard to get someone to speed on the research you've been doing. And so basically that's a time when we're not actually coding. If we're not actually coding, the mob does not help us. When we're writing code, it can help a ton. And where we're prioritizing work, it helps a ton. And, uh, we have another game that I like that involves a lot with the Insights team. Also my team. <laughs> They had the first talk. They had the first internal talk. <laughs> Give them that. I think our team has stayed highly productive because because of the mobbing. It's had a it's had a huge effect. Um, our product manager is also extremely happy with us. We we can get things done <laughs> pretty quickly. Um, it's also worth mentioning that I did uh, remote parent like remote mobbing when I worked at Living Social, and everybody was at their own terminal. I'll be around. Questions. You can talk to Maureen, you can talk to myself, uh, and like, we would be more than happy to answer any questions about mom and you might have. So, cool. uh, now, back for the second attempt for technical difficulties. 